The remarkable story of the life of the Apostle Paul is repeated every day as sinful and broken people throughout the world are transformed by God's saving grace in Christ Jesus. Now, that's exactly what the creators of Paul, the last apostle, want to capture in this series because there are many today who need to hear and see how God's love can change their lives just as it did in the life of Paul. Hi, and welcome to today's Mid-South Viewpoint. I'm Byron Tyler, and it's my pleasure, friend, to have you join us as we welcome the actor who plays Paul, Ulysses Laura Mindy. Join us here in the Bot Radio Network studio on Mid-South Viewpoint to discuss the series, Paul, The Last Apostle. Ulysses, welcome to Memphis. Your plane just arrived, touched down. Literally. Would you like some peanuts or <laughs> coffee or tea? <laughs> they were offered. Thank they were you. offered. Okay. Well, well, thanks. Thanks for having me. But well, we're so glad to have you here, Ulysses. Who is behind this whole creation? I mean, Chosen has been a big hit. Yes. Uh, all, all across the world, you know, and and people have really been exposed to the gospel as a result of, of that series. Yes. Dallas Jenkins, I've had him on this show uh, on some other projects that Dallas worked on, yeah. and so this particular one about the Apostle Paul, whose idea? So you have someone here locally in Memphis that uh, he pastors a Hispanic church. And uh, his name is Oscar Gonzalez, and he's a writer and executive producer of that show. So um, him and um, another team of people uh, got together with the idea, but it was his original idea to uh, to do something about Paul. You're right. Uh, the the chosen has set a trailblaze for the rest of us, and I think people are really. Uh, hungry for that type of content. And what's intriguing to a lot of folks is that there's been a lot of work done on Jesus's life, but not a lot on Paul. Not not that really depicts Paul and his transformation. Uh, so we're really excited to uh, to bring him to, to people's homes and, and, and encourage them to get back to the Word and learn more about all the books that he wrote. I mean, yes. he wrote more more than <laughs> half of the New Testament. So, so having him be uh, now in in a TV series like you know you mentioned, The Chosen, um, is exciting, and I think uh, people are looking for that. Well, you, you mentioned Oscar Gonzalez, uh, the executive producer, creator, the writer. He is from Chile originally. Yep. He and his family, as you mentioned, are here in Memphis and part of the Iglesia Buenas Nueva uh, church ministry. And plus, I want to mention, too, that Oscar got his master of arts in, uh, from Dallas Theological Seminary. We'll talk more why that's important as we look at producing this series and we look at biblical authenticity and, yeah. and the result of you know this whole project. For your part, did you have to audition for it? I did, um, and uh, it was an interesting audition. Um, I did it on Zoom, and um, uh, Paul was very short, <laughs> I'm six feet two. So uh, people say that I was miscast, but uh, I must have done something right with the uh, delivery of the monologue because uh, uh, Oscar and the director and everyone liked my audition. So, yes, I tried out for it and I got the part. Wow. Ulysses, what about your acting and your interest in acting? Where did that begin? It started as a child. Um, My dad's a great storyteller, and I think I inherited that from him. in college, I uh, did a lot of stage work, theater work, church stuff, plays, uh, and I've, I've actually made my living doing something else. I'm in the restaurant business, but uh, I put that aside for a while, and about 15 years ago, I picked it back up, but, but now in, on the film side, which if any of your listeners are following the same type of career, I encourage them to do theater first and then film, because you're a much more prepared actor if you've gone through one and then the other. Uh, And that was very helpful to me. Um, And then uh, as things have developed, God has brought projects to me and uh, I have a different situation. I, 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 like I said, I pay my bills doing something else. So I'm interested in seeking projects that are significant, projects that are life changing. So I haven't done a lot of work that, I mean, I don't want to do Dr. Pepper commercials. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I rather do work that is glorifies God. And, and and 
uh, it's it's been a gift uh, that that God has given me, and I want to honor Him with that. So. Yeah. Did you have a relationship with Oscar Pryor? I mean, how did you hear about this role playing Paul? We in the acting community, we follow casting directors. We're on social media. We follow uh, casting websites that have roles and jobs that are available. And I saw a casting notice by a casting director, Ronnie Hummel, who lives in Texas. And I've been following her for a while because I like the projects that she has done. And then she posted this about Paul, and I, I, I jumped on it immediately. Yeah. <laughs> you started zooming. <laughs> yeah. What have you, Ulysses, discovered uh, about the life of the Apostle Paul by playing this part? <laughs> How long do we have? Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, and I, you know, my life as a Christian, because uh, I grew up, I grew up in a Christian home, and I knew about Paul, just like I knew of God. But my relationship with God didn't really start till I was in my 30s. And um, learning about Paul, even though I had read his letters and I, had, I knew who he was, now that I've gone deeper into his life, both as Saul and Paul, has, has been kind of transforming. Uh, someone said in my family that this was a life-altering role. And um, I've... I'm beginning to believe that because we filmed the pilot in February, and here we are in September looking to do a couple of more episodes soon, and I have been reading, Byron, uh, there's so much on Paul. So many historians have written on Paul. It's not just the books in the New Testament, but but all the literature that's out there, yeah. the, peop- the, the essays that have been written on his Mars Hill speech. I mean, it, it, is so, it goes so deep, and the theological implications of everything he was able to do. Uh, I mean, we wouldn't be sitting here today, probably, if Paul had not been chosen by God. Yes. I mean, he was brilliant. He was perfect for the role. He was, so, so, so the attributes that he had that the, the original 12 could not have uh, provided, you know, fishermen. You know, Peter was rough. Yeah. Paul was Paul was something completely different, yeah. and uh, he was able to access places that the other guys probably could have never been able to go into. Pharisee of the Pharisee, you know, no. when it came to the law. He knew, he knew the people that he was trying to convince. He yes. knew exactly how they thought. He was uh, uh, Gamaliel s- said that he couldn't keep him interested in in books. Uh, Saul was amazing. The, 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 he just wanted to keep learning, and uh, he carried that intensity, it, it, that part of his identity. I think he carried yes. it into Paul. Yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I've learned a lot. I, I still, I'm still reading. Uh, I just picked up uh, the, 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 all the collected works of Josephus, just to learn more about the Jewish people and the Jewish wars, it's just to understand his identity as a Jew. Uh, so it, it's there's there's almost too much information. I have a lot of uh, friends and uh, a lot of my pastor friends have uh, talked, sat down with me and talked to me yes. about about Paul and right. how he was a melancholic <laughs> bull in a china shop. <laughs> you know that's that's why one one of my pastors uh, described him. And I have friends who have given me their uh, photographs of their trips to uh, uh, on the walks of Paul. You know a lot of churches take people on these trips. And uh, he, he brought me all these albums so, so that I could kind of dive in because I don't know if we have the budget for me to fly to, <laughs> to Greece before we shoot the next episode. Yes. <laughs> well, you look at the life and you, you look at someone who defended the faith and encouraged the church. Mm-hmm. You know, I think those are the two things that really stand out. And when you think about like Galatians you know, 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me yeah. because of that, that that identity that he discovered that this new creation being mm-hmm. in Christ yeah. that the identity now was Christ in us yeah. and in us in Christ that is something like no other faith or religion right. has right yeah it's interesting that you know, we're reading uh, we're studying Galatians right now you just said that and um, one thing that caught me on Sunday was uh, that, that really stood out for me was he called out Peter when he called him out in the synagogue in front of everyone. Yes. And he said, if, you, if, you, if you're going to stick to the law, then Christ died for nothing, 
which I think is a huge message for our series too. Yes. Because uh, uh, Oscar has said many times that the purpose of the show is is to encourage the churches, to encourage the folks that are there a little dormant, a little lazy, spiritually lazy, mm -hmm. to come out of their pews and go out and evangelize, and and which is what Paul did, and Paul suffered for God, uh, even though I also find it interesting and you know that when he was killing and torturing and persecuting Christians, he was convinced 1,000% that he was doing it in the name of God. Yes. So, um, and for him to do that turnaround, and then for him to call Peter, another giant of our faith, to call him out and say, hey, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, there's so much there, you know, so much material. So, you know, I always joke with, uh, with uh, Pastor Oscar that he's got an easy job in writing the scripts for all his episodes because everything is right there in the New Testament. <laughs> the, the Bible is a, uh, Byron, the, Bible, the, the Bible to me is a perfect script. There's, there's, there, there's stories there, judges, kings. I mean, you have so much there that doesn't need to be altered like some of these films that we've seen where yes. they have just taken the true stories from the Bible and changed them up. Yes. And you said earlier about biblical, um, that we want to keep that integrity. Yes. And that's one of our main goals with the show too, is to make sure we stay with what's biblical. We don't add too much fluff. And and we we send that message very clearly, which was Paul's mission. Yes, this whole time. Uh, Ulysses, is there a particular part of the life and ministry of Paul that, as you've studied his life and doing this part, that you relate to personally? Well, I would say, just everybody wants to know what what's Paul's thorn on his side. And nobody knows, but I feel that um, it was probably, I think that his thorn was the fact that he never got over how much grace he received, how much forgiveness he received, and how much mercy he received. And that haunted him the entire time he was on his missions. So for me personally, I think, you know, I, I haven't been a good guy, Lord. But yet you've picked me and you've transformed my life and, and I've asked you to help me get rid of things and you did. Yes. And now I'm a changed man and now it's all completely different. So I identify with that transformation. And and that's what we want to try and get people to to kind of catch on and take away from watching this show is, man, if God can do that for Saul. Yes. What can he do for you? You're it, no, you're not too far gone. Yeah. And, and then when you look at the human side, where he identifies, you know, the life really in, in the even as a believer in the human state in Romans, where he talks about, I do the things I don't want to do, mm -hmm. you know, and even the grace is poured out and we have that identity in Christ. Yeah. We still blow it. I don't know about you, but I do. Oh, constantly. But the father is there. I mean, if we confess our sins, he's mm -hmm. faithful and just. I love I love the whole, the prodigal son because uh, it's not really about the son. Yes. It's about the character of the father. Yes. That he's always there, no matter what the son did. He ran out there and greeted him in the fields. Yes, and and that's what our father's doing. I Byron, I have three sons. I have three sons. Oh, yeah, yeah. they're all grown up now. They're all, yeah. you know, a lot of testosterone in the house. Yeah, I know. Mine are grown up. Got yeah. grandkids now. Oh, I don't. I'm not there yet. Mine are still <laughs> college students, but. Um, but you know, I didn't really understand God's character until I became a dad myself. No. Becoming a father opened my eyes to the things I was doing to my father in heaven, right? Yeah. My sons, I counseled them, I gave them advice, I told them what not to do, they did it anyways. Yeah. They rebelled. <laughs> they, they, they did all the things that I told them not to do. But yet, but yet I love those three men like, you know, like, like nothing else on this planet. So uh, I know that uh, God sees us in the same way. We mentioned in, in the opening of our time about the, the Chosen series. And I know that uh, the filming, one show so far? We have a, a, a pilot a episode. Pilot. Yeah, pilot which episode. we could call episode one. Uh, yeah, episode yeah. one was actually filmed at the Capernaum Studios, uh, which is where I think the first three seasons of Chosen was filmed. What was that like? Amazing. 
because I'm a huge fan of that TV series as well. So being there and, and going to the places where, you know, Matthew was collecting taxes or, or you know, uh, uh, Peter and Eden were crushing grapes, you know, visiting <laughs> those little spots on, those, on that set yeah. or being in the synagogue. Yes. Uh, where a lot of the uh, pilot episode happens for Paul because he loved going into every synagogue yeah. every time he got to a town. Yes, uh, that was amazing to be there. Yeah, the, the I believe the Chosen was filmed uh, there season one, and then they went to Utah, and now they have their own studio. Yes, um, but uh, Capernaum is growing; they're remodeling. Uh, I know they have a lot more facilities because they do other stuff besides uh, uh, biblical uh, productions. And uh, we're excited to try and go back there and do episodes two and three there. Who are some of the other actors that are working with you on this particular series? I don't know that any of these <laughs> names will be known in the acting community. I mean, it's it, they're all Texas-based actors. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, Lydia, who plays Hannah, an amazing actress. Uh, I, I, I don't know their resume. See, you Byron, have a Timothy, too, right? I, we have a Timothy. We have a Silas. We haven't casted Luke or Barnabas, uh, and of course, uh, we have an Aristarchus, and uh, we have the Bereans that were mostly background extras, and that was a lot of fun, because uh, you know we always we always encourage everybody to be more like Bereans and do your homework. Yes, right? yes. And that was that was a lot of the message in the first pilot. The message is taken largely out of Acts chapter seventeen, I believe. That is exactly right. Is that yeah, right? That's Paul's journey much. back to Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's uh, in in the episode. It starts in Thessalonica. Uh, he's he's being chased out of Jason's house, which Jason and Hannah are, are mentioned in the Bible. As a matter of fact, because of that, my, you mentioned three sons. I have a Joshua. A Jason and a Jewel. We pick Bible names. Is that right? And we pick Jason out of the out of that particular story Look because that. of that. Yes, yeah. he's he's also in episode two, obviously, when he gets released from the magistrate. Um, and so we pick it up in Thessalonica. He he is then stopping in Berea. He deals with the Bereans. The Thessalonica thugs find out that he's in Berea. They come chase him out of Berea, and uh, and that's why the uh, episode is called uh, Unexpected Journeys. Yes. Uh, because Paul just kept being run out. And then in episode two, uh, which we'll film this this coming fall, this the, uh, in the winter, uh, he's on his way to Athens. Yeah. And that's when he meets the, uh, the Greek philosophers and idolaters. Uh, I'm really excited about that episode because uh, there's so much packed in, yes. that, in that episode. Ulysses, are there plans of getting this project up and running similar to the grassroots management, marketing, and production cost that the Chosen series used to get its start? The kind of grassroots, you know, getting... That, that, that is a formula that has worked so well. Yeah. And, you know, we, we want to copy that and use it. And, and, and like I said earlier, I think people are hungry for that type of content, and I think they'll get behind these well, types and, of projects. And I think what's beautiful about it is when the faith community sees an opportunity that they can invest in, not only financially, yeah. but also with their prayers, their support. Amen. And we see how it is swept, how God is used, like through the chosen, yeah. to reach so many people with the gospel. We should be so blessed and fortunate that uh, we would get the uh, the financial break that Dallas got with the crowdfunding yes. at the very beginning. That would be amazing. And you know, God's got plans, and we don't know what those are, but I know he's working. Yes, he is. I know he's yes. working. Producing a faith-based show that implements dramatic elements while the maintaining biblical accuracy, which we mentioned, uh, I, I would assume can be very challenging to be able to keep those two together. How are the scripts managed for biblical accuracy prior to production and filming? So we always have a table read. And there's more than one person that's checking the script. And on set, there is a person who's just managing the script. So there's not a lot of ad-libbing. I'm not sure if that's what you're uh, getting to. Obviously, there is some um, dramatic leniency there in the sense of communicating the story. And the scripture, biblical yeah. you know, integrity there is not being compromised. Artistic license is one thing. Yes. But we don't want Noah talking to giant talking trees. Yeah. So I, I, I know what you're getting at. And, and I think I mentioned it earlier, but there's so much uh, 
in the in in the Bible itself that will carry us through those scripts that I don't really think we need to change it too much. Yes. I mean, some of these conversations that Paul had, some of these admonishments that he did to some of these churches when, when he wrote to the Galatians and said, what is wrong with you? You know, you're slipping. You, you know what freedom is, and you're right back into your sinful nature. Um, the way he talked to the Greeks, the way he talked to the philosophers, uh, at Oropagus, all that, it's already there, Byron, and I don't know that we need to uh, change it too much or manage it too much. Just stick to it, really. What about the speech accents of Paul? How did you come up with that? So I that actually your- have an, an accent coach, um, and, and Jim Johnson's in, in, in Houston. It's a fantastic uh, coach that was referred to me by my, uh, my uh, acting coach, uh, Deke Anderson, and, and you know, we, we have to look for these guys who are pros to help us. He agreed that me being Cuban and having a Spanish accent with my R's and uh, <laughs> that Greek, which was one of the languages that Paul knew well, that having a Greek accent during the show would be uh, beneficial yes. for the story. Uh, so I, I have been practicing that, and I will deliver my, my Mars Hill speech uh, uh, in a live presentation at a breakfast here in town um, in that accent. Ulysses, we mentioned a moment ago about Oscar Gonzalez, who is the creator, writer, and producer of Paul, the Last Apostle. Uh, also want to mention uh, Ruthie Grumbine, the director. Mm-hmm. Now, she Her interest in filmmaking started back when she was in eighth grade. That's right. She went to Liberty University and, and got her degree in, uh, in filmmaking. Some other projects, too, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pure Flex, I believe she's worked on. Yep. But she's the director. What's it like working with Ruthie? It was great. Ruthie was very patient, uh, very gentle on set. Um, to the point to where I, um, I, I almost thought that sometimes she was too patient, <laughs> you know, because you know you have a you have production costs, you have budgets, you have a time limit for things, and uh, 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 she could have been a little bit uh, more uh, 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 stern <laughs> because you have it's a business yes. after all. Yes, but um, you know one thing about Ruthie that I that I learned uh, because she had done so much. Um, uh, crew work, camera work, light work, sound work. She knew everything that goes into. Every, you know, she's not just a director that is just directing. She's a director that understands how something needs to be framed because she worked that part of the production, or or where the sound has to be edited, and if it could be edited because she did sound. And, you know, hey, I want this kind of lighting because she has done lighting. Yeah. So all these pieces, you know, if a person is going to call themselves a director, they need to have worked all those other positions. Yes. You know, <laughs> I'm telling you from experience because I know if I'm going to call myself a restaurant owner, I need to have washed dishes. I need to have tended bar. I need to wait tables. I need to have cooked before. Otherwise, you're not leading. You're just giving orders. I love that. And she understood everybody else's job on set, and that's what made her a really good director. Where time is slipping away, I want to wrap up with a couple of things. Um, Ulysses, why do you think it is that Christians today don't take their walk with Christ as serious as the Apostle Paul? That's a big question, and I think it's because Paul, first of all, he got his he got his assignment directly from Jesus, right on the road to Damascus. But don't we have the same you know commandment when he says, "Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations"? Absolutely, <laughs> and we have and we have the Bible, which yes. they didn't. Yeah. Everything was word of mouth. Right. We have every home was. 10, 12 Bibles in it, right? And we have the internet and we have social media and we can learn so much more. We're spiritually lazy. Mm. Right, it's bottom line. I, I, I think, you know, the bi- the best thing that could happen to America right now is a revival because we are asleep and we're letting um, satanic and bad things just take over 
our country and our world. And that's why we're in the shape we're in. And we're spiritually lazy. I challenge your listeners to, I mean, we always say on the whole thing about politics to wake up America. Well, wake up Americans, wake up Christians, yes. wake up because you're, you're, you're sleeping at the wheel. I think that's what's going on. We, we, we're just taking it for granted, right? Our, our, we've, we've been in a country that's so comfortable. Everything is so peaceful. Everything is so so good. Yeah. I mean, our economy's challenged, but it's nothing. I mean, this is still the best country in the world because I, I wasn't born here, so I know what it's like somewhere else. And so we just take everything for granted, and we take our salvation for granted. We take grace for granted. Paul didn't. Because he knew what he had done, and he knew directly from the mouth of Jesus, you're going to be my, my, my messenger now. Yes. And those three days when he was blind, waiting for Ananias, that changed that man, as well as his time in Saudi in, in, in Arabia, as yes. he went away and just consulted with God, and God had to reprogram the man, right? Yes. But can you imagine if Ananias had not obeyed? If he had not listened to God and gone there and prayed for him, giving him sight back, yes, where would we be today? I'm sure God would have found another Ananias. And but I, I think what you just said is the key to my question: obedience. Yeah. You know, we talked about being spiritually lazy, which you just mentioned. Yes, but it's an act of obedience. Mm-hmm. If we would do what God has commanded us to do, exhorted us to do through the life of the Apostle Paul and His Word. And through the words of Christ, who is our Savior, yeah. then maybe we would have more radical lives too than like the Apostle Paul. Paul said at the end of his Mars Hill speech, up until now, God has overlooked this ignorance. But you need to repent. He commands that you repent. He's not suggesting He's not inviting you to repent. He's commanding because he's going to judge the world with justice. Yes. Ulysses, God bless you, my brother. Thank you so much for coming to Memphis and and sharing with our Bot Radio Network listeners. Uh, We're just going to pray and trust that that this series is going to take take off, you know, and and really impact uh, the world for the gospel and for— the, the life of Christians to Amen. follow Christ with all. God bless you, my brother. I'm Amen. so glad we met. God bless you, Brian. And I look forward to updates. So anytime you're in town, please stop by and we can share more. <laughs> Will do. Well, friends, that's all the time we have on this edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. Thanks for stopping by here on the Bot Radio Network. I'm Byron Tyler, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.